Hitch on Drive. Well, Christian churches and Christian values have been in the news a lot lately, especially last night when more than 100,000 people around the country apparently attended various uh, churches um, to listen to Prime Minister Howard and Opposition Leader Kevin Rudd, both uh, committed Christians, they say, uh, give their, their thoughts about the future of Australia. It was a sort of a pre-election uh, push by both men to, to the various uh, churches. And uh, at the same time, I've been reading a book called People in Glass Houses, an insider story of a life in and out of Hillsong. Hillsong, of course, being one of the uh, greatest and fastest, I should say, developing um, religious uh, organizations in Australia. I think when they bought their new premises in Redfern not long ago, it cost about $28 million, something like that. So they're up in the big money league, at least. And the author of the book is called uh, Tanya Levin. She was a member of Hillsong for about five years, and then she uh, left and wrote a book about it. And I suspect now she's very much an outsider when it comes to the life of, uh, of Hillsong. She's on the line. T- Tanya Levin, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Now, you've, um, it, it is a very interesting book that you've written. But the funny thing is you still, you still seem to, um, how can I put this, you, you still seem to have some yearnings for Hillsong, and especially for the, for the charismatic people who lead it. Well, there can be a, a range of very lovely people, and I guess it's something, once you've had it in your life for a long period of time, you always nostalgically hanker after those sort of memories, I guess. Yeah, because I read one quote in your book where you said that if uh, Brian Houston, uh, you know, you'd love to have dinner with him again. When, you th- when much of your book, you, you re- it, it, it comes across that there's a fair bit of manipulation goes on within, within this church mm. and that um, uh, money doesn't seem to be the root of all evil. It seems to be the root of all, all this religion. It is. That's exactly right. It's uh, something that they believe very much that God wants you to be wealthy and that uh, it's a sign of your faith to sh- how much wealth you actually have. And, and they hope, and obviously it does, some of that, uh, that wealth will, uh, will spin off to the, um, to the church. Well, we get most of that wealth, <laughs> See, this, to my mind, is not much different than the, um, than the televangelists and the Jim Bakers of the world who uh, convinced people in the United States that um, it was great to have money, but uh, give us a lot of it and we'll, make, uh, we'll build these edifices to, 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 our, to, to our Lord. That's exactly the same model that's being used here, Darren. You're exactly right. Yeah. The, uh, and what sort of resistance... I mean, obviously you didn't get much help. Did, 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 um, did Brian Houston, the... the the current uh, head of it and the son of the founder of it, uh, Frank, did he, did, did he cooperate at all with this book? No, I wrote to uh, Brian and Bobby Houston, the senior pastors of Hillsong. I sent them an email and I, and I asked them, first of all, to, you know, to, to let them know that I was going to be around doing some research so that, you know, to quell any rumours that might come up. And I offered them the opportunity to meet with me regularly and, and discuss the progress of the book. But instead I got a letter from the general manager of Hillsong saying that I was never to step on Hillsong premises ever again. Well, they have uh, categorised the media and books would come out of that category in three, three things you point out, the positive, the neutral and the antichrist. Where, yeah. do, you, where do you fit? Um, I think by process of elimination, um, I'm probably not particularly positive and I'm not particularly neutral. So, um, hmm. <laughs> okay. What, what uh, do, do people, does everybody inside Hillsong know the foundations? I mean, I suspect the people inside Scientology and the converts these days don't realise that, uh, that um, L, R, 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 L. Ron Hubbard was just a science fiction writer. Mm, um, mm. And in this case here, you've got the founder, uh, Frank Houston, father of Brian, who, f- from your research... A, he, he cooked the books when he was with the Salvation Army in New Zealand mm. and uh, then had some strange uh, breakdown and couldn't remember any of it. Mm. Um, and he has been, um, been named uh, about having um, uh, sexual offences against teenage boys. Yeah, and uh, 
uh, if you're aware in the papers recently, he's also been named by a man who was who sustained long-term sexual abuse uh, under the ministry of Houston, of, of Frank Houston, uh, the senior Houston. Yeah, you're absolutely right. There's a lot of people in that congregation that know nothing about the founder, and that's because the turnover is so high with churches like this. You're looking at about a 50% turnover rate every five years, is what the research shows. So half the people that are here today in Hillsong will be gone in five years' time. And that means that, you know, a lot of ideology gets left behind mm. and a lot of the stories get... Not, not, not heard, yeah. yeah. Well, that, that case you mentioned about that young man, um, was that the case where Frank Houston had some unusual uh, ideas on how to cure his homosexuality? Yeah, this, uh, this young man who, well, he's not so young anymore, but he was a young man at the time, spent uh, four or five years being, uh, having his uh, homosexuality purged from him. It didn't work, even though he left, got married, had uh, a marriage with, with some children. He's uh, now came out has come out at the age of 50 as, as a gay man, and it's been a very painful process for him. And this was the case that, uh, that, uh, that, that, that the current head, Brian, and, and, and his wife, Bobby, got standing ovations when they broke the news eventually that old Frank um, um, did have an unwavering love of God and was absolutely repented his, his quote, moral failings. Yes, his serious moral failure. I was there on the day when they made an announcement, and that's pretty much all that they referred to the allegations as. Brian called it a serious moral failure. So the offences were never named on the day of the announcement from the pulpit. So they didn't say what it actually been that these moral failings were. No, we didn't know at the end of that of that meeting what it actually was. Uh, you know, we've all got different ideas about what a serious moral failure is, and to me it was, a, you know, a lot more serious than what was being announced. Yeah. The... Um did, having research, having had the experiences, and having, and obviously you came from a very religious family, because as I said, for your book details how you were, you came from South Africa, and then you came to Australia, and and all the time your father was always finding um, churches, especially Pentecostal churches, for you, you and the family to go to. It was a huge part of your upbringing, wasn't it? Absolutely, it was a part of our all day, everyday lives. Yeah. And do you do you remain a Christian? Um, I remain. <laughs> it's interesting because this is the, the question that keeps coming up. Um, I remain somebody who knows what isn't more than what is, mm. so I know very much what isn't true. I can't promise you what is true. Um, Actually, but, that's, that's a very good answer yeah, because I, uh, it gives it gives you a break on a lot of other people. If you can, <laughs> if you can, your mind can say, "I know what isn't true." If you can see, I mean, the the Bonhomie and Hillside, Hillsong rather, I mean, it's there. They all sing happy songs and they have uh, they put out CDs. And I think I'm right in saying. Wasn't I that they they just spent twenty eight million dollars on their new headquarters yeah, in, the in, Ro in Rosebury? Yeah, an enormous amount of money, and that's I mean from just from the from my understanding that's just the the building plans. That's not the final figure. So yeah, could just be the land. Yeah. Well, they, they do seem. I mean, you're getting a whole wave in Australia now, and watching it from the outside with the family firsters mm. with with Hillsong. Now you got uh, Mr. Rudd and Mr. Howard both addressing a hundred thousand people around the country. Um, mm. And, and almost saying, you know, I'm more of a Christian than you are. <laughs> <laughs> it is it is a bit strange. Yeah, it's obviously, you know, very important to the pollies at the moment. It's a very contentious issue. Well, um, you know, uh, the, the, the Mr Fielding, who got into the Senate, mm. uh, the family first, as he got it on less than 2% of the primary vote. Um, and purely because, I said, uh, his congregation virtually got him there. Sure. I mean, it's... It's interesting, yeah, whether it's church planting or branch stacking. But, yeah, they've got people positioned very well around the country. Yeah. All right, so the interesting book. I, I enjoyed it. I just The reaction from so many people who will be anti it because they'll say, because they don't want to know. Yeah, no, it's, yeah. I mean, it's a very predictable reaction. A lot of people don't want to hear those kinds of things. It's very difficult for other Christian churches as well to acknowledge that this is going on because they don't want to be seen as attacking their own. But that's okay. That's par for the course, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, all right, good, Tanya. Thanks for your time. Thank you so much, Darren. I'm a big fan, and this has been a great opportunity. <laughs> You're very kind. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. That's uh, Tanya Levin, author of People in Glass Houses, an insider story of life in and out of Hillsong. 3AW.